everyone, it's Maggie Bot, and today we're going to take a look at Gentis. Gentis is a two to four player game from Spielworks and designer Stefan Risthaus. He is best known to me as a designer of Arkwright, which is literally in my top 10 games of all time, though I haven't even played that game 10 times. <laughs> well, close, uh, right up in there, there probably eight. Eight. <laughs> uh, Gentos, though, is much shorter. It's a 90-minute Euro, but the depth of strategy for 90 minutes is stellar, just like out of control. The game itself um, is a, an action selection game in which you take tiles that give you actions to build cities, train workers, draw cards, um, build hometowns, or play cards. And cards are your kind of uh, biggest source of points and also every requirement on a card is going to tell you what you need to do for those other things building the hometowns and such so that's kind of the main goal as a secondary goal you're also racing to be the first to uh, build out eight cards or train 18 workers or play all of your cities onto the board because every point counts Especially in a game where your final score is in the 80 to 120 point range, I would normally say that four extra points here or there isn't that significant, but in this game it completely is. I've never had a game of this that wasn't pretty darn close if all players are um, of equal number of plays. Um, once you've played this a few times, teaching it, you're gonna kind of stomp other people in it most likely. So that's your main overview. Um, the components themselves are oh, really good. Uh, the chipboard and uh, wood, all very normal, very Euro. The coins are very Euro. Um, the cards are really nice in this one. This is my favorite type of card. Uh, so linen finish, easy to shuffle. No, I don't sleeve, and yes, I shuffle, riffle, shuffle them all. I quite like all of that choice. Um, the graphic design, though, I have a couple of issues with on the board next to where you get your action tile is kind of a symbol that looks like the type of action but it's also with a background so it sort of looks like it should be a tile over the hometown is a reminder that you get to activate a region but it makes that reminder look like it corresponds to the column it's above the art though i think is pretty generic but lovely i, I think it doesn't take away i think that the types of workers are interesting enough where i have a little nicknames for them all because they don't really have a name below them, which I think is great. Any Anytime I can call something the bunny priest and other players at the table know what I'm talking about, I am very happy with myself. Um, what is the hook though? So the hook comes with the player board. So I said it's an action selection game. Um, this is your player board. On it you have a temple and an oracle space. Those you collect wooden cubes to do like special free actions. Uh, below that you have this worker track. So you have your bunny priest, your blue shield guy, your yellow dude, your blacksmithy guy, your pottery dude, and your toga guy. So those are all your workers, but unfortunately because those are on the same three tracks, you can only have um, as many yellow guys as you don't have blacksmith guys because those cubes are going to run into each other and they can't pass each other because they're all the same cube. I really like this push and pull mechanism here with the workers, but the big kahuna, the reason this game is fun is the track above there, which is how many actions do I have this round? Um, at the beginning of the game, you're going to cover up five of these spots with these generic red cubes. And that leaves you seven squares to take actions in. So when I take an action in the game, I take an action tile, pay an amount of money, and then I also need to take time. Time comes in either singles, which only last for the round that they're used in, or doubles, which stick around an extra round, but take up less space. So if an action tile asks me to have two time paid with it, um, I could pay up to three spaces with that, or I could say maybe I want one less space next round, take a double, and I'm only taking up two spaces. And, and that's the beauty of the game. It's this time management idea, trying to eke out extra actions, trying to stay in the round a little bit longer than other people so you kind of have some free play time. 
but that that is it right there that that time management and it comes into play one other space um, so as I said you're gonna be working to play cards and at the end of a round after everybody's passed and everyone's kind of out of actions you never pass early in this game um, if you have more than three cards in your hand you're gonna take hourglasses you're gonna take time for every extra card you have so you don't want to have extra cards but at the end of the game, you're going to be able to play any of the cards left over in your hand. And if you had the prerequisites for them, you're going to score half their points. And some of these have pretty significant amounts of points on them. So at the very end of the game, maybe it's worth some negatives of taking hourglasses if the cards I'm keeping in my hand are worth those negative points. That being said, any cards in the, at the end of the game that you couldn't play because you don't have the re requisites for, uh, you're going to get negative points. <laughs> so you really need to be careful with what cards you're keeping and make sure you got your workers in place for them. Um, sorry, <laughs> I have notes on my hand. Um, so strategies, uh, I think it's, it's a kind of fun because you, you're racing toward being like the first to get your cards down, the first to get your hometowns out or whatever, because it's worth extra points if you're the first to do so and that gives you kind of three flavors of this game either high cards that are just easy to play out like no matter what their power is lots of cities to get lots of stuff and then hopefully you get a couple of really good cards or you work on training up workers and then the latter half of the game is just you going to card city and card city is only a little bit hard if somebody else tries to do the same strategy as you um, then you're both fighting over the cheap stuff and it gets a little bit tricky and that's this whole game is that if somebody's doing the same thing as you they take all your cheap stuff or you both take half and it just works out where you're wrestling the whole time so especially in three players you want to be the third player that no one else is paying attention to which is my whole strategy in all games ever um player count uh two is a great learning game but the game is meant for three or four i want the type of rivalry that comes with three or four players, you do get fewer action uh, tiles in, fewer, in lower player counts, but I really think that three or four allows the game to bloom out and have multiple strategies and allow people to, to wrestle a little bit, which is always really fun. Final thoughts. Um, so the action selection and time management and trying to uh, wrestle people to get the things that you want on time is really fun. After a couple of plays, the final round, I run out a little bit of relevant actions. There might be one or two things I need to clean up just before we get to the last round, or last scoring phase, but that really depends on what my opponent stopped me from doing the phase before. And so if you're playing a game where everyone is keeping eagle eyes out and everyone's trying to take what other people might want, that's a very different game than everyone just taking the best thing for themselves. Uh, so I think the game is super worth it. I think it's a great game. I think the, the surge plays, like when you first buy a game and you're going to play it with your group and then you play it and you play it and you play it, I think that count is around six to eight. And I think after about six to eight plays, you're going to put it back on the shelf for a little bit and then you'll bring it out to show someone who's in town or you bring it out because you remember how fun it was. But I think that's its shelf life at the very beginning and that's kind of how I'm judging games these days. Some games have about two plays for me. Some games have infinite plays for me. Terra Mystica, when that first came out, I played probably 18 times when it first came out. But... That was earlier in my Euro career, and now I have 40 unplayed games weighing on my shoulders, so maybe that's something. But I think this game is well worth the price. Um, it will be kickstarted by Tasty Minstrel with some sort of deluxification at some point. Um, downsides, I think teaching how to train workers or draw cards is a little tricky. And um, the graphic design choices they made for uh, each section, that little like header with the, uh, the halo around it is awful, and the color of regions above the hometowns is absolutely awful. Oh my god, stop it. Because hometowns are a little bit hard to explain anyway. So let's dive into that. 
how to train a worker. So in the game, when you take a tile and you want to train workers, you're gonna be sliding those beautiful red cubes one space to the left or right, however, however they move up. Um, you can train up to two different workers with one action, or you can train two of the same worker with one action. So you pay an amount of money. That is gonna determine a lot of things. So if I take the six money train worker tile, that is going to allow me to train up to two workers for up to six value. So you look at it and it has one cube at the top and one through four, and then two cubes at the bottom and three through eight. So for one movement, I can move any of those types because I've paid six and the threshold there is four. I still have to pay the full amount no matter what I want to do, but it's checking how much did you pay. So for one movement, I can move anything I like. But for two movements, which is obviously the better choice, I can only go up to wherever the six is. There are six different types of workers, so that means the two at the very right I will not have access to with this action tile if I'd like to move two workers to train. So it all sounds very circular, but that's one hump you're gonna have to get over to play this game. So. If I pay six, I could move a toga dude and a pottery dude who are at the very left. I train both of those one space and I take those tiles and I move them all the way to the right and I shift everything down. So anything that was cheap this round is gonna get expensive next round if I chose to use them. Cards work exactly the same way. If I'd like to draw one card, the thresholds go from one to eight. I can choose anything if I paid eight. If I only pay six though, I can only choose to where it says six. Still costs six to take the one that's under the number one, but it's asking me how much I did pay if I'm in a threshold. And there's a two card draw, and unfortunately six would only give me the first four cards as my options. And if I wanted three cards, I could only choose the first three cards for six dollars. And so it's asking how much did you pay, and here's the range you can have. Later in the game, there are cards and hometowns that allow you to break that rule slightly. It says, okay, now check where you did draw from. As long as it met your threshold, you pay whatever the number above the card or the worker is, and that allows you kind of a discount. Hard to get people in on this train early, but I figured I'd put it here at the end of the video because it's very rulesy. Um, the only other rulesy things you might run into are in that hourglass bit at the end that I mentioned. So during your decline phase, every round you're gonna have a decline phase. And in that decline phase, you kind of reset things, you take cubes off things, you, you get all your stuff back. And at that point, you check how many cards are in your hand, and if you have three cards in hand, you're fine, or fewer. But if you had five cards in hand, you need to take hourglasses and put them on your board for the next round. And at the very end of the game, it's gonna wonder how many hourglasses you have left on your board, and you're gonna get major negative points for having any. So a major, major strategy I feel is gonna emerge in this game the more you play it, is that you want to hold over extra cards, but you want the difference to be worth it in the amount that you're gonna score, which is half of that card's value, compared to what you take for having the negative hourglass. Big high advanced strategy here, maybe this video is making no sense now but I'm hoping it is. So overall, I think the game is really good. If you like Euros, you're gonna like this. If you don't mind learning a little bit of a rough learn, this is for you. When Tasty Minstrel comes out, we will see what happens. I'm very excited to see what happens. Um, but that's all for me for now. If you have questions, please leave them below or hit me up on Twitter, it's at MaggieBot. Um, as always, I love you all, bye.